By the way, uh, Mike, everyone complaining, I hear you. I, I did, I heard it too, it was echoey. I put this dead cat on it a while ago, but it was like a cheap one from Amazon and I feel like it was making the mic sound awful. So comment down below, does this sound better? Hopefully it does, cause it's the- Hey yo, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, beautiful people of the internet. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another lovely edition of The News with Nate. It is a Saturday. We are about 20 minutes past the updated scores for day two of week three of the CrossFit semifinals online edition. Again, we're gonna chat about the two European events going on over there around the world. Everyone's doing them from their homes. And because there's no live broadcast, you know what I'm doing? I'm bringing you the content you deserve. You know what? I honestly was like a little bit, I'm shooting a vlog today. You guys are gonna see that tomorrow. That's right, a good, like a lifestyle for those of you who watch good news, that's coming back. Um, I'm shooting that all day today. And well, I mean, I my first favorite, I really wanted to, it wasn't to sit and make another video, but I'm doing it anyways. Re told me, she came up to me, she's like, it's moving day. You gotta make a video, it's moving day. And I'm like, it is moving day. Day two, Saturday, moving day. Anyways, let's dive into it. Stop talking, Nate. Start talking more, Nate. Lowlands throwdown on the women's side. Big leaderboard shakeups. Well, <laughs> Laura Horath and Emily McQu Emma McQuaid, sorry, basically swapping spots. So Emma McQuaid taking a first place in event number three and a fourth in event number four, whereas Laura Horvath did take in a first in number four, but only a ninth in event number three. So a little bit of a flip-flop in that first to second spot. Only an eight point differential, nothing too crazy, but enough to get her up in that top spot. Gabrielle Magala sitting comfortably still in that third place position. Good for her with a sixth and a third respectively today. Annie Thor's daughter holding on strong in that qualification spot taking an eighth in event three and a second in event number four, which is awesome to see from Annie. I think we didn't expect. And then Tori, just like I predicted yesterday, making a jump. Longer gymnastics chipper, Tori taking advantage, second place in workout number three, and 10th place in workout number four, which is an impressive finish for Tori and a barbell only, super heavy, barbell heavy, only heavy workout, which is, you know, it's, it's not necessarily one that we'd see her doing super well and consistently, but a 10th place finish is great. And then obviously making her money on that chipper. So overall on the ladies side, Lowlands, nothing we didn't expect to see in terms of leaderboard shakeout. Those are, all five of those are the names that I predicted to be in the top five at the end of the weekend. All five are sitting in there pretty decently right now, Tori with a pretty comfortable almost 20 point lead over sixth place. Assuming that these ladies will probably hold out through day three, but awesome performances to keep them there on day two. On the men's side of the Lowlands Throwdown, couple big jumps we're seeing. BKG sitting handily 16 points clear in that first place spot with an impressive second place finish in workout number three and an 11th in workout number four. Again, gymnastics volume, chipper, muscle ups, dumbbell lunges, double unders, absolutely coming out and crushing that. Great job, BKG on the chipper and then still holding a solid 11th place finish enough to keep him in that first place position or sorry, bump him into that first place position after day two. Adrian Moonweiler. I told you guys to keep your eye on him yesterday, seventh or eighth place yesterday coming out of day one. Big hop up to position number two, sitting just behind BKG, tied for second with Sam Stewart from Ireland. Adrian Moonweiler had his 12th place finish in workout number three and a third place in workout number four. So obviously moving that snatch barbell with ease to land himself inside qualification. Mortiz Fiber, who is occupying that first place position after day one, has dropped down to fifth with a 19th place in workout three and a ninth place in workout four. So obviously not a super great day for him compared to yesterday, but still enough to hold into that top five, which is qualifying position. So as long as he comes out and has a consistent day number three, we could probably see him qualifying in that game spot. Over at the German throwdown, ladies field to start, our girl Kristen Holt, the friend of the channel, second place finisher in 2019, coming out, holding on to that first place position, now tied with Jacqueline Dahlstrom, exact point tie, 376 points each. Both of them amazing athletes, we'd love to see them doing well. First place in event number three for Kristen and fourth place for Jacqueline and then event number four, a little flip flop, fifth place for Kristen and second place for Jacqueline. So super awesome. Eight, two performances from both athletes to cement. They are well and clear of third place Catherine David's daughter by almost 50 points. Catherine though having a super good charge up the leaderboard on this day two, coming out of her fifth place tie with Sam Briggs yesterday, jumping up to third, eight points clear of fourth place. The seventh place in workout number three, her third seventh place finish in a row. She got seven in event one. Seven in event two, seven in event three, which is kind of funny little anecdote. And then clinching a first place finish in event number four, moving that snatch barbell. I mean, I don't want to say I'm surprised because like Catherine's good with barbells, but like 
we definitely would not think, especially maybe after some of the performances we've seen recently with some of the strength events, it doesn't seem that top, top end strength has been an overall focus. And this workout did not require top end strength necessarily. It required you to be strong, but it wasn't like a complete max out, but absolutely incredible finish. One rep edging out Jacqueline Dahlstrom for that first place finish. And then Sam Briggs holding on to that fifth place spot where she was tied with Katrin Davis' daughter coming out of day one. Sam Briggs had a second place in workout number three. No surprise, called it on that chipper for her. But then a 22nd place finish in workout number four. Obviously her worst finish of the weekend so far. However, it was enough to hold on one point over Evie Hollis for that fifth and final spot. And in fourth place, again, we have MLA Le Pen, who was in that top five qualifying yesterday, still holding on solid sixth and seventh place, respectively, in today's workouts. Once again, all the perennial games athletes, all the names we expected to see in that top four, the ones I called from before this weekend, Kristen, Jacqueline, Sam, and Catherine, all sitting in that top five qualifying spot. None of them on the outside looking in. Sam is obviously at the most risk. There's still about 40, 37 point gap between her and spot number four but only a two place or a two point gap, sorry, between her and spot number six in Evie Hollis. So Sam's definitely gonna have to come out and have a solid day three, but the other three athletes are definitely pretty comfortably in that qualifying as long as they don't have any disasters coming into day three. And over on the men's side at the German throwdown, Lazar Ducic coming out solid day two, coming second place in workout number three, crushing that chipper just behind Jonkowski who took that first place position. Although Jonkowski beat him by a minute, a minute. Yon won that workout by a minute. Kind of crazy. It's not the absolute deepest field we see at the German throwdown, but nonetheless, to win it by a minute, that's a pretty impressive finish for Yon. But back to Lazar, he had a seventh place finish in workout number four. Very good finishes overall. Everything inside the top 10 so far for him, which is basically, I think, what's pushed him above Yon. Yon had a second, a second, and a first in the first three events, but then took a 12th in the snatch workout, which hurt him a little bit and dropped him down. Four points behind Lazar for that top spot, but obviously still sitting pretty comfortably in that second place Spot well and clear, like 60, 70 points clear of the cut line. Lots of room to work with again as long as he comes out and has consistent day three performance across the board in the two events, five and six we should be fine. And I mean, obviously looking at the events, you expect to see that. We have another chipper coming with some legless rope climbs, seeing what he did in the chipper today. You would expect nothing but the same. And then Gretel, Klinger, bar facing burpee, classic CrossFit couplet, came out, took second friendly frown. I expect to see a very similar performance in the last workout of the weekend from Young. And finally, Elliot Simmons still sitting outside, looking in 12th place overall. He took an eighth in event number three and a 25th in event number four, which definitely hurt him. Another finish, not only outside the top 10, but outside the top 20. So he's sitting pretty far out of that cut line, still about 60-ish plus points out of that fifth place qualifying spot. So he's gonna have to make a real big charge on this last day if he wants to help himself into not only a games qualifying spot, but potentially even a last chance qualifier position. But overall for day two, that's what we got to bring to you. Did see some big moves, I guess, coming out of some of the athletes, you know, Adrian Moonweiler making that big jump up into the qualifying BKG taking that top spot. That's awesome to see. Yon holding on. And then the other athletes were pretty much just holding on as well. Sam obviously fighting off disaster in that last workout to hold on to her fifth qualifying spot. And athletes above, the athletes we expected to see in those qualifying spots on the ladies' side in both competitions are sitting there pretty handedly. And again, barring disaster for pretty much any of the perennial games athletes we talked about coming into this competition they should all be good to punch their ticket to Madison this year. Anyways, fam, I just wanted to bring you that little recap video, chat about everything going on. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to scroll down, hit that subscribe button. I'll wrap up the finishing of the competition and everything that unfolds in Monday's news video. And before that, tomorrow, Sunday, I will also be releasing a vlog for those of you who are interested in checking that out. But for now, that is it. I'm gonna leave you here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.